So we are headed back to Children's Mercy at 748. Roman's in bed right now. We're going to go wake him up and, and um, get him packed up and run up to the hospital. Because as you guys know, Roman had um, his MRI today and he has a programmable shunt. So what that means is when any type of strong magnet gets near his shunt, it can change the settings. So an MRI is a strong magnet. So um, we always meet with our neurosurgeon or the nurse afterwards so they can adjust the settings back to where it was. They forgot to adjust the setting. So I had to go back in and I said, hey guys, we need to adjust his setting, make sure it's at the right setting for him. And so they came in and she said, the neurosurgery nurse, who was incredibly nice, I have no complaints about that, um, but she said, I checked his notes and his shunt is at a two. Does that sound right? And I, w I honestly couldn't remember. So I was like, yeah, I mean, if it's in his notes, that must be right. And a shunt has different <laughs> settings. So a 0. 0.5 is the lowest setting and a 2.5 is the highest setting, which means that's the most constricted. So it decreases the flow the most. So going from a 0. 0.5, which is open fully, to a two is basically closing the shunt and allowing the cerebral spinal fluid to keep backing up into his brain as it's made today. Right. So when I got home, I was telling Adam about the appointment because he wasn't able to be there today. And he said, they put a shunt at a two. And I said, yeah, she said she checked the notes and that's what it was at. And he said, no, it was not at a two. It was at a one. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, I, I remember these things. And I know he does. He's really good with numbers and his memory is way better than mine. So, but we went ahead and messaged our old neurosurgery nurse from St. Louis and she confirmed that it was at a one. So since then, we've been trying to get a hold of Children's Mercy Neurosurgeon which was a pain. I mean, I don't know. You have know. to call the emergency nurse line. They have to page neurosurgery. It took a while for them to actually call us back. So basically it was about 45 minutes in between it. Which if this would have been an emergency, we would have been freaking out, but. We would have been at the emergency room. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but anyways, so that was frustrating too. But, but then talking to her, we realized going back through our notes that it was a 0.5 wasn't a one. One was what it was when he first got his shunt placed. They actually decreased it a couple of years ago. So they went from a 0.5 to a two, and that's why it took so long and was so hard to change it because it's never been changed that high. So it's like turning on a, a, a hose, you know, spin it over, all the way up on that valve that's never been past that point. So we're on the way up to the ER. We're getting ready to wake Roman up and, and um, go back all the way downtown to Children's Mercy, which is like 45 minutes away. To get him checked and waking him up and doing it. So <laughs> the big thing is, is that always advocate for your child. Always know your information because that's a really big deal. And it's not an emergency. It's just peace of mind to know that we can sleep tonight and not have to worry about him screaming with a shunt headache or something wrong with it. And just making sure we get it done tonight so we can have our day tomorrow. But know your stuff. Yeah, and don't always take what a doctor says is true. I mean, you know your kid more than anybody else. And it's not just about neurosurgery and shunts. It's, it's about everything. Like, you have to be your child's advocate. If you aren't, then nobody else will be. Nobody else cares about as much as your child as you do. So know your stuff and be your child's advocate. Roman, guess what? What? You're going to go back to your doctor. <laughs> Is that funny? Yeah. All I right. see Daddy didn't put any jammies on you. Get your pants on. We got to go. I'll get my pants. Uh. <laughs> the ducky you were talking about? <laughs> yeah. Roman, who wakes up like that? That excited to go to the doctor. was this morning. <laughs> like, I'm going to my doctor. I... Uh, uh, uh. Can I go to the rocket ship again? Oh no, you don't have to do the rocket ship again. They're just gonna change your shunt setting. And that's it. It's gonna be real fast, okay? Hey yes. okay, guys, so we just got to the hospital back downtown. They're gonna get Roman's shunt figured out. Um, yes, that's your shunt. He is strangely excited. I don't know. This kid cracks me up. Um, I just want you guys to know, I'm not trying to complain or anything like that. We aren't complainers. We just. It's really frustrating as a parent um, to feel like you have to know everything. Like, you should expect your doctors to know things. So, um, yeah, it's just frustrating. I mean, I just don't feel like we should have to remember everything and we should have to question everything. And 
unfortunately though that is the way it is we like i said like we said we are our our kids only advocate and if it's not us then nobody will know or stick up for them so i'm really thankful that adam went a little papa bear and um got this figured out and we're here to get it fixed and hopefully not have any issues if we would have left this alone he could have had a serious shot malfunction he could have had that caused him to have a brain surgery so um we're just thankful that we're getting this taken care of and we're doing it tonight and roman was happy about it so we gotta go in hey guys okay so we just got out of there um the neurosurgeon nurse that we had tonight she's so 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 friendly so apologetic um so let me explain a little further why this is a big deal so again what hydrocephalus is is a buildup of fluid in your brain and when that fluid builds up it causes pressure to your brain and it can cause a lot of bad things seizures just like bad stuff and even death so roman has a shunt to drain that fluid from his brain so nothing bad happens so um the shunt setting that he had was on the biggest flow and then what they did today was restrict the flow so not as much spinal fluid was flowing down so if adam wouldn't have caught this mistake roman could have potentially had severe brain damage that lasted forever um you know most likely we would have caught it before severe brain damage happened but it could have happened and so that's why it's such a big deal to us and that's why we're so annoyed um but it was an honest mistake and we do understand that people are humans and that mistakes do happen yeah we'll see he really wants cheetos guys what had happened was the nurse today saw his x-ray and on his x-ray there's like these weird pictures of what what a shunt should look like and what setting it is based off of the picture well she forgot to mirror image the picture so a two and a one look the same if they're not flipped to a mirror image so she forgot to do that that's where the mistake happened so um the good news is and you know and if you guys watched my video earlier they had a really hard time getting the shunt to change and the reason why is because we now know that his shunt had never changed before so they basically had to move it when it was probably had you know cerebral spinal fluid and crusty and junky gunky stuff in there and that's why it was so hard to move um so yeah we are at the setting it should be she said it moved super easy to get there um so we're at the setting it should be and he should be good to go we're obviously going to watch him closely and make sure nothing else has happened and that everything's good to go um, but that's it. That's our adventure tonight and we are headed home and hopefully he's able to get in bed so he can go to school tomorrow. He really wants to go to school. So we want to make sure he's not tired and grumpy. Bye. Hey guys. Um, it was a long night last night. Roman cried all night long after we got him home back from the hospital again. Um, we tried to put him to bed and he just kept saying, like, saying his head hurt and it was like he was getting, like, sharp pains or something in there. And we kept asking him where and he sat on his shunt and, um, for hours he just would wake up whimpering and crying. And, you know, that's just not like him. He is usually pretty happy-go-lucky. I mean, sure, he throws fits sometimes, but... It's just not like him to cry like that and it was breaking our hearts because we could tell he was in pain and there was just really nothing we could do um so finally after a few hours of that we ended up calling the neurosurgeon nurse again and she explained that that can be pretty normal after the shunt gets messed with several times in one day um he was just having a bunch of pressure and then like releasing of pressure and all this stuff in his head and it just was causing him to have headaches so um he woke up happy today he's eating his breakfast he wants to go to school even though he was up most of the night um but i figure he'll be happy at school at least so um he's gonna go to school today and we'll see how he does after that